is in the law of God and doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Um, but the teaching that I'm bringing tonight will really, really change us. Praise the Lord. For me, I, I have been changed by it and I'm being changed by it and I guarantee you, no matter how, how much you have not felt a sense of spiritual progress, you will feel one tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been studying personally the ministry of Jesus um, once and again I I have the opportunity to study very carefully what Jesus did how he did ministry when he walked upon the earth because the Bible tells us that we should look unto Jesus calls him the author and the finisher of our faith in other words, everything we do in this kingdom life must be within the jurisdiction of that which was demonstrated by the Christ himself. He not only came as a substitute for us, he came as a model. He came as a masterpiece of God's intention so that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we will align everything we do to be consistent with both his ideology and his doings. It is only when that happens, listen carefully, that God can be glorified. Jesus has become for us the model of that which can satisfy God. God can only be satisfied in the Christ and in anyone who does anything that is reflective of the Christ. The only basis for God to be satisfied in the life of a man is when Jesus is being glorified and when every activity that man is engaged in is a reflection of both the person, the character of the Christ. So I've been studying the ministry of Jesus and I'm telling you, um, Jesus is truly and literally the greatest inspiration in my life. His, his model, his understanding. Every time I study the Gospels, I am, I am amazed at his spirituality his intelligence his paradigm and his approach to life his approach to people his definition and his approach of ministry 
his approach of success everything about jesus christ inspires me and so as i study him i check my life i check koinonia i check the things that we do against the benchmark of the model the reference that has been created and if at any point i find myself short of that standard or i find our leadership and our approach in the ministry short of that standard then he does not repent to look like us are we to, are we together now the responsibility is upon us to realign ourselves so that we reflect him in his fullness and um it never tires me i've i've studied the gospel again and again i don't know how many times but quite frankly every time you study scripture with a new light and a new understanding it seems to me as though the higher you rise in the spirit the more certain things in scripture open up to you in a way you will never believe they were there not because you are not aware of their reality but there is an understanding that makes certain things now open to you because you now have both an experience with God and experience with life that can help you understand those things more personally. So the more I grow spiritually, the more emotionally connected I am. I, I no longer just study the Bible for the, the, the spiritual education necessarily. I, I i see myself i when i study the bible i'm i'm very emotional about it many times i'll have to just close the bible and fight tears because i look at these scriptures and i know how true it is let me tell you something the more you grow in god the more emotionally connected you are to the study of the word you no longer study just for information you you literally become emotionally connected to it because you are rising at a frequency that is closer to the state Jesus and the apostles were when they wrote this. So when you study the Bible from that height, you are able to not only understand what they are writing, but discern the motivation. You can literally feel the emotions around the things that they wrote. And this is what has been happening to me as I study the Gospels. And um, I rediscovered a few things. There are things I have known, but then for me, the Lord nailed it in a way that blessed me so powerfully. And part of that is what I'll be sharing tonight briefly. And then trust God that we pray. Hallelujah. I have studied many concepts. I have taught them. Um, the concept of sin the concept of holiness the concept of righteousness the concept of the kingdom kingdom advancement the concept of success and prosperity the concept of faith all of these are very important kingdom concepts that must be understood by the believer because if any of these concepts are misunderstood or inaccurately understood they will sponsor error in the life of a believer though well-meaning you will find yourself with a frame of understanding that may shortchange you from experiencing and living the fullness of the life that jesus gave us hallelujah and um philippians chapter 2 please we're going to read 3 and 4 as a foundation for the things that i'll be sharing tonight my teaching tonight seeks to build in us in a greater measure the character of the Christ as we prepare to wrap up the year we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways and God has really helped us we have enjoyed his benevolence and his grace once and again he will bring in words like this that file us that build us that align us so that our work will be very productive say amen philippians chapter 2 i'll read 3 and 4 pay attention it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves verse 4 
look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others when you find the newer translations it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need i i want to talk um well i would just start here but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there on the concept the root cause of majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um, God forbid but come if it's an example please if I get this lady pregnant what did I say is an example listen are we together now I'm very serious tonight laugh now because I'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if I get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly listen is more dangerous it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean that that's that, let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc but as you rise in god you will discover that the text of your dealing with god will no longer be physical things are we together when god begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word it's called self-centeredness 
we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning Christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in Zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the Holy Ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in Zaria will not be recorded there are we together God will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study I mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the Bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of Christ and his purposes are we together now so if God is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to ABU anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured are you getting what I'm saying now this brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with God and this state I just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um, personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the Bible says in 1st John chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is John the Apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right 
it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the loss of the eyes then number three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world so john the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um, when I when I when I saw it uh, for me it, it, it touched me um, was that that's that's not not um, not James help me Holy Spirit second Timothy please give us second Timothy that should be Timothy right second Timothy 3 second Timothy 3 I think I'm right second Timothy 3 please give it to us from verse 1 to 4 it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse 2 for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters. They will be proud. Do you understand the context of that scripture now? The foundation is lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves is not a point. It is the reason why these other things will happen. Because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves. That love for themselves will make them covetous. So when they see somebody else's thing, they say, ah, this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more 
unholy uh -huh. without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know I am apostle Joshua Selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not God the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for God is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure and mounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves it's why business people fight themselves it's why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way 
then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god do you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that um, i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself it says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if this comes out if this is sam's handkerchief now i love sam with all my heart if this is sam's handkerchief and it falls now i love him and i love the handkerchief but i do not think i will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief are we together if the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it is it really sam's handkerchief it's mine i'm trying to claim it that's what we do with our lives the level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for god we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay let us are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, 
very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness There are so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery, listen, they were scholars. They were dragging her to Jesus. You would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law. They were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus so they did not care who was the scapegoat that be used that was being used let me tell you something about self self-centeredness self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody is the hallmark of self-centeredness when my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness when a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel is self-centeredness it's not just pleasure it's self-centeredness are we together when somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing calling himself a rich man it is not just money it is self-centeredness because that somebody's salary in his pocket he does not care that somebody has a wife and children he does not care all he's concerned about is let me get this is it not how we all are how many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but i want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met i've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if i must corner somebody to buy the iphone 6 iphone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness Have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they'll be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay you also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say, okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we're laughing but that's how we are so says the word of god we are spiritual 
but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves the 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 the, the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him are we together yeah so when a pastor sits down and tells people all of you bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to 5,000 and says, look, you better use your faith. Bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual and people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches and I looked at him I said I want to ask you a question I said why are you talking about these things and he said no 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 it's not like I have any problem I say you do are you kidding me you do because the God you claim to be serving who you are defending so personally is quiet so I wonder why you who is supposed to be his representative is so personal about the issue Yes, I know the lady wore trousers, but why have you taken it so personal? It's like a mission you gave yourself. Are you really sure you are doing that for God? Okay, the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers. What is your own business? We do a lot of things that look spiritual, but brothers and sisters, the foundation of it is self. Self. The need for self. So we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanting to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Kononia is quiet this night. Myself. For me. So we go to pray. Lord, I trust you for a car. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My God. You can spiritualize. Do you know, I love the word because Jesus is the word. And the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, give me a car for your glory. And then he says, since it's for my glory, walk with my own timing. And he said, no, Lord, give me a car now for your glory. And God is saying, no, it's for my glory. Let me control the timing. I say, Lord, you, I force you by sowing a seed. Give me a car now. It's for your glory. And God said, just remove the for your glory. And say, give me a car now. Before I know what to do with you. <laughs> we think, we think because we are saying for your glory. It is spiritual. Listen, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure. Are you getting that? Five o'clock, people wake up in every city 
while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we 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 cap our self-centeredness with that statement be glorified be glorified is not just a statement be glorified is a state where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life the, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again it's not the embarrassment you have you have you have you have died you have died to your ambitions it's about him if koinonia does not work it's no longer about joshua selman's ego to say I maybe this guy is backsliding are you seeing so the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages i will think i am growing spiritually but it's self-centeredness that's why some of you came for koinonia this night i know you love god but the truth about it is that that's not the reason let me tell you how you know we are self-centered whenever we do not get our desires our responses become ugly five minutes before your desire you were trusting that the woman will not die lord i know you i take you by your word for your glory lord in the name of jesus i am your servant and then the person the person dies and all of a sudden your ego is on the line no 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 no. let's raise this person back to life and you try and try and nothing happens and your ego is on the line i watch it happen to people you prophesy to somebody in the name of jesus you are going to get a job and you see the pressure on you men of god prophesy like that and they go back and say oh god please let this word come to pass it looks spiritual it is your word so you are in such a passion to bring it to pass so that they can say apostle prophesied and like he said it came to pass is god helping us this night are you learning something self-centeredness brothers and sisters are you seeing the damage it has caused to us sister are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful you may not marry the will of god because although in your prayer you are saying lord is only your will all that is talk in reality you have already painted the picture of the man the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man you have painted it it's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1. Please give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now joshua selman give him money give him fame give him increase but jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. 
there are things I know that can touch the heart of God are we together there are things I know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God Jesus look at Jesus who do being equal with God equal with God I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point father remember that our glory make sure you never forget it I'm only here for three and a half years I'm coming back make no mistakes no new election in heaven I am here my position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted I'm calling on you you better answer me Jesus submitted himself and said glorify me so that you will be glorified brothers and sisters this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality do you know this is what Jesus came to give us there's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament let me tell you if you meet Jesus today he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament whether you are under grace or law is nonsense he's going to ask you one question who is seated at the throne of your heart Jesus came to deliver us the very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness not from a life of works no from a life of self-centeredness the motivation behind our activities being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ brothers and sisters I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or new you are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer the essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order the essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated the Lord gave me a revelation this morning both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin the only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have both of them were tired of the leadership of their father one had the courage to express it one kept it they wanted ownership and here's what the first one said the first one said give me that self-centeredness there give me i know you gave me access but i don't want access because the access is in your name i now want it in my name give it to me the younger the elder brother did not say give it to me but it was in his heart listen i'll prove it to you when the prodigal son returned back and they were celebrating him what happened to the elder brother he became angry and this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that i always balance i've been insulted many times because of this i tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with god it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk i give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sitters that idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go 
now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen I know there are times we can tie things to God but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with God it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory I will do anything to behold you as my king One more time for your glory i will do anything just to see to be hold you as my king i want to be where John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am Savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only second listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days 
you fast with yourself at the center of your heart you have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program i assure you you are not going to touch the anointing a heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come okay lord this is the lady i want to marry you i like her but thy will everybody say thy will be done say thy will this is the language of a christ-centered life lord i want to go to london it's always been my desire however i realize that my life is not my own the bible says i've been bought with a price you don't act as if jesus didn't finish paying for you he paid for you completely in fact whether you are born again or not you are still his property the earth is the lord's and the fullness therein right so whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son you still belong to him listen to what jesus said my meat this is what moves my life my nourishment my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god i operate certain principles and i enjoy blessings while i'm wearing the nice suit while i'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because i met it on my way to pleasing god whether or not i met it i am determined to still finish pleasing him so paul says what then shall separate us from the love of god look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my god a man who wrote two third of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is christ i don't know for you but for me to live is christ then even if i die listen paul was not saying if i die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me if you die as a result of armed robbery it's not gain it's a loss because one you are going to hell number two the kingdom is not advanced through that but that paul was trying to say look my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering and regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise it is secondary so compared to the fulfillment of god's program your marriage is secondary that marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now god your will be done exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the holy spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love god he will love me for what i'm teaching you this night it's the key to make spiritual men a life that is completely out and you see some of us we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered are we together we come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered they look at you and say promise how old are you and you say uh, maybe I'm, I'm 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 32 or i'm 30 or i'm 35 and they say ah, you should have a car by now ah, what are you saying you should have a car and have a five children and this and then that challenges you and you go back and say lord they are insulting you god said they are not insulting me if they are insulting me i will react i'm not offended i said god me i'm offended i'm serving you <laughs> you see we create all kinds of theological messages let me tell you if he's the one taking the glory why are you taking the shame listen whoever is taking the glory 
should be the person taking the shame please help me why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame are we together take it half on me now. see how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory we are not there's a song in my spirit and the shout of the earth will be your praise God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name all the glory Lord is yours God forever all the glory is yours listen Lord Jesus if I remain barren like this I give you praise I will never stop serving you but it is your reputation so let the pressure go to him are we together the moment people look at you and say are you a woman or a man direct the shame to him but you sit down and absorb the shame and say God give me a man child or I die and God says this thing you are doing is not for my glory it's spiritual you are sincere I'll show you why many people never get rich they think the key is doing business they think the key is after all of these things God looks at your heart and says no sir you are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle i'm not seeing crowds in my ministry i know if you speak a word the doors will open and here i'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you were coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when i come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results they never change suddenly they only manifested it i told you the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother we keep i used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother but i found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing one was quiet with his own while the other one executed it hallelujah luke chapter 22 verse 42 we're going to pray i like us to read it this was jesus at gethsemane listen 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 there are two things here that we must understand we are going to read it but the first thing you need to understand is jesus had his own will it is okay to have your will it is okay to have your desires only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny and if need be give way for the will of god to prevail are you hearing what i'm saying now yeah your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of god if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and god's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been god's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together you look at the lady and say kai i like the way this lady speaks don't you think she'll be a nice wife you see let me tell you something brothers let me give you a frank advice if you keep being carnally minded i give you two guarantees guarantee number one you will miss out on the will of god two you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on god i saw that lady figure eight be careful be very very careful 
I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us, but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God. There is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Here's the language of spiritual. Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I, said, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions he will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you save kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Five years after marriage, no child, and people come. And you know, people are so naughty, they can say something. I say, ah, Madam, you are serving God. What is all this one? At least go, go for koinonia now. Eh? Apostle is anointed. He can, is it pride? What is stopping you? And then after listening to those things, you can go back and cry and say, Oh God, give me a child or I die. No. You say, Father, a child or no child, let me tell you one truth. Me and you. We are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, what, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? 
is is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce god to be equal with these things god will never i cannot reduce god to the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say god you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will i ever open my mouth and tell god he's not faithful why that what happened just because there was no tea to eat you to tea to drink and bread to eat you carry the bible and run around heaven oh god are you giving me tea or i should tear my bible is this your word and god says now nah, well, what is all this one just because of tea you are shouting self-centeredness this is why the anointing does not work in the life of people this is why god does not lift certain people inside outside online you are hearing me and the lord is speaking to you can your will bend to the will of god look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of god you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of god when sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if god says joshua selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone i don't say oh god see let's be real me i'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and i'm not talking of small things your tongue singlet god says give you say, ah, after all i was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving god will never ask you to give what they gave you he will ask you to give what you worked for he's very smart if he says if he, he look let me tell you something this our god is powerful he will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift then he will ask you to release it god will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to because it doesn't make sense the essence is not the giving the essence is your heart giving him space to find expression when satan comes to you he studies the things that have not been surrendered to god that becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life hallelujah let me tell you something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not if the lord asks me now and say son let this be your last sermon as joshua selman in the name of jesus christ the resurrected lord i'm standing before him i will not lie to you when i drop this mic no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach I'll cry because I have a lot of passion for this but I love him more than that if you like carry placard bring back apostle move around with it and say no you must come back the demon that manipulated your mind you must come back I said I understand you are human if I were you I would do the same thing but I'm not going back again let me tell you brothers and sisters listen I have laid down things in my life you will not believe it's a price some of us finances whenever money is leaving you even if you are keeping it i don't mean you are giving it just that you are keep it's not in your pocket you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality materialism and self-centeredness joined together god does not want your money what does he do with it god does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love god but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of god interrupt anything lord don't come and interrupt my program i have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers That's why people are confused in Nigeria. They don't know what to do with their lives. They claim they are hearing God. They claim they are walking with God. But their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures 
to show they are successful. Are we together? The quest to buy a car, the quest to get married, the quest to have children. You have all girls, and somebody is asking you, Ah, Kilo Day, we need girls and boys. So, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife. Say, Madam, you had that thing, please. I'm tired of this embarrassment. Oh, yeah, let's pray. Lord, give us a child for your glory. No, give us a child for my ego. My masculinity is being insulted. And I want to use you to cure it. And God says, no way. I'm not that cheap. Brothers and sisters, this night, I want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will, but your will be done. You find peace in your life. I like Job. Job lost everything in his life. As if that were not enough. You can lose any other thing if you have your health, you are okay. He lost his health. Dogs would come and lick the source of Job. Do you know what that means? Imagine seeing Ali Kodangote on the streets of Zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark, dirty wrapper. And people look and say, Job, you? Where were the friends you helped? And Job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said Job curse God and die and Job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me I know I've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will I trust him all the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change comes the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, let it be known unto you that our God will deliver us. We know that there is a provision in him to deliver us. However, even if, aha, uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one. You call even if doubt. Hey, nothing. My husband must come December. Lord, I tell you, I've sown seed. I am even taking communion. Please don't give God a headache with all these stories. Save yourself all that immaturity say Lord I give you praise I'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in God that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament. What they preach in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. The key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered. The motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified it's my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified Every time I stand on this stage and I look at you, believe me, I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we're traveling, when we're on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave I think 4 30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to lagos and while we're going in the night i was saying what is all this why am i risking my life like this i didn't sleep i wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and i had to what am i looking for ministry am i so dull that i cannot write a book can't i do a webinar are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible I can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around 
and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king I want to be where you are I gotta be where Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head. That load is not from God. The Bible says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Your life is surrounded by too many self inflicted worries. Worries that make no sense. At the foundation of those worries, is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it didn't say discuss with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you. Sister, the worry in your life is killing you. There are some of us who are older than our age. They look at you and they say, how old are you? Let me guess, uh, 37, you say me, I'm just 25. What, what made that? Worry added an age that was not given by God. You see people worry all the time. They get up in the morning, they are worried. Ah, the Bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit? This is scripture. Do you know, honestly speaking, sometimes when, when, when I drive around the road or when I stand, I start laughing in the car. I'm just laughing because I'm saying, my God, what made people like this? How did people suddenly become like this? You see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this we will steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like 1,000 more people. How can we do that? Your ego on the line. Forcing you to wake your leaders in the night. In the name of leaders meeting. But it's simply your ego on the line. Please rest. Prophesy to someone close to you. Say rest. Say it, rest. I bring you a system in the kingdom. Where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems. Look at this come sir if this guy is an arm robber watch this this is an example if he's an arm robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that an arm robber again that's not an arm robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people 
the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand they, is, are you wearing Versace or this and the other person said Kai you see I'm tired of all this tailor tailor thing this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around I need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular weave before Christmas it's unnecessary that money can pay your rent your small house that you are you are paying unnecessary things listen please i want you to write this down the only thing that is worth your blood the only thing that is worth your blood listen to me is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage. Two things. They are the only things that the Bible places so much priority onto, even unto death. Thank you. Are we together? I think it was last week or the week before last. I sang a song I will sing it again when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay, turning sinners into saints. And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what I'll do with my life. This is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No, you came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do, cannot be done. No, whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that it can be done. <laughs> Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having, 
going online wanting to like every lady capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to god and rest if god does not give you a husband cat walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if god does not open access to wealth do business buy sell sell cement sell sand do anything i assure you you will never have this thing in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart god does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it Hi. the worry of men is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry i study a lot about health do you know i have found out i'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them i tell you i have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service i, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here Your ego will not allow you to leave. You say, no way. God, collect it, I will buy. And you buy it and it never gives you joy. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, he will take back something he gave you. Write it down. When you insist on taking what God did not give you, believe me, he will take back something he gave you. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, I will raise your banner high. I shine your light so bright. I sing in honor of you. You know, 
you know my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport we just get to the airport and because we arrived late we've missed our flight they have they have learned this that i don't worry if someone calls me now and says apostle your house is on fire your car is on fire everything is on fire your bank is on fire I will tell them let me finish koinonia when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to god i give you praise do you know what i'm going to do i'll go back and i'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no i've grown up you know what we say let's say okay in house it'll never happen never happen I'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to God I, I'm not I don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to God is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership Lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours I've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more I decrease, my worry decreases. Whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house. I, I, I mean, let him, let him handle everything. He's not in me as a tenant. He's in me as a landlord. I give you the secret of peace. Quit the life of self-centeredness. Finances, all of this. I, I'm trying to do this. Keep your ego on the line if you ever seek prosperity let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom if your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom one gentleman came and met me and he said that um that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right I see the shoe you are wearing I see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you are not going to give you are only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable God is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it 
but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised ha -ha. when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce ha -ha. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing huh? you are you're a graduate you are you have masters you even have phd no job what is wrong with you this other guy is a smoker and he's working in nmpc you claim to love god huh? and even i mean you cannot even get a job anywhere jesus be praised be glorified not in the name of jesus i will go about what kind of i'm tired of unbelievers mocking me let them mock if you take the shame what are you doing with the glory he cannot take the glory and give you the shame whoever takes the shame should also take the glory rise up on your feet take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over take over i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over I have come to the end of myself Take over, take over I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Prayer point number one, Lord Take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. I pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god 
but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory i am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of god everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify god prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen nimrod kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride i have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it i'm so obsessed by my desires i don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh god are you praying i have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what i want Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. You are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately 
will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is god speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah my husband let's pray say no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray empathy of the feeling of others the bible says for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it when the election Nigeria's election and the president now won Jonathan did something I'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now 
leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say i want the shoe so bad if i must steal i will steal i want the phone so bad if i must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say lord help me i'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and i'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost been destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today i receive grace to shut my mouth my blood mail has destroyed too many people i have joined the hands of the heads of good friends i have caused trouble for too many people it's not worth it i'm a child of god stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let i will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but lord i declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when i tell you nothing aside from the purposes of god is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We are rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you in the eyes of jesus your reverence for god is more important than the forgiveness of your sins look at it after this man i pray hmm. jesus is teaching here hallowed be your name that is the foundation for everything that i do i want to reverence you that is the reason why i will not go and smoke it's not just because i'm running away from hell no I desire that you be lifted. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, your purposes. Are you seeing now? This is your prayer. The moment you reference the Father, the next priority is anything that will move his purposes. Look at this. I hallow your name and I desire your kingdom to come, your influence. And that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth. So he focuses on the will of God. Is that how you pray? No. Your needs. That's what you drum heaven with. 
you sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven but he's teaching us how to pray your kingdom come this is what i want next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing i ever ask god that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it if the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it it is useless simple it is completely useless we're rounding up from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus so from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens it's all about you i don't know what the devil has put as a load upon your head and has spoken to you that you will never see the other side of the miracle i want to announce to you that today today that situation must change yeah. are we together yes not everybody here is here because they are sick but i tell you more people have gone through hell from january till today than they have in the last 10 years walk on the road and see people talking to themselves you think they are talking to you until you wave them and you find out they are not even seeing you frustration they are about to give up 
I don't know how many car accidents we saw today. And we did not see the other car that was hit. Meaning the person threw himself out of frustration. The devil, there is a plot from the kingdom of hell to weary believers and make them think God is not faithful. Because that's the whole goal. News after news. Bad news after bad news. And at a point you sit down and say, Kai, is this thing working? Whether I eat my tithe or I pay it, I found out that the same result happens. Nothing. Let me tell you something. It's the waiting process that takes time. The manifestation comes speedily. Learn this. Manifestation does not come with time. It comes overnight. Overnight. All I have needed, I am self provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I want you to make two decisions tonight. One, that you will never complain and grumble again. It looks like an impossible situation. But I want you to make that determination. That from today, I will never find myself opening my mouth to say, God, why? Why me? Why not you? Who else? Make a decision today. Hear me at this miracle service that you will never complain again. That you will tell yourself, my God is good all the time. Regardless of my experiences. This is how I am. You will never hear me open my mouth and say, God, why now? I wanted tea. Only sugar came. Can you bring bon vita and hot water? No. God, you are faithful at all times. Are we together? The Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine. Right? Make that decision. Decision number two. Make up your mind to be ever thankful ever thankful not when you get a testimony make it a lifestyle many of us thank god when they give you a testimony oh a new shoe just arrived a new tie just arrived you must make up your mind let people believe that every day is christmas or new year for you because of your attitude of gratitude People come to your house and you say, Lord, I thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for abundance. You are a good God. And your friend says, I thought you said you just have Gary, no sugar. You say, exactly. You say, somebody just sent you an alert. Abby. No, my God is faithful. That's how I am. In Nigeria, yes, that's how I am. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. God is ministering to you. To the whole Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given. Jesus Christ Sing it with faith in your heart And now Let the weak say I am strong And let the poor say I am rich Because of what
I'm challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent. Number one, avoid complaint. Nothing slows down consistency. Nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complaint and grumbling. Let me tell you something. Murmuring is sin. Murmuring is not just wrong. Write it down. Murmuring is sin. You find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring. The Bible says they limited the Holy One by murmuring. Complaining. Lord, you should have done this. Lord, you should have done this. And make a decision under God. Advise yourself that I need to be consistent. And I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again. That does not mean everything will be a bed of roses, I tell you. Challenges will come. But you must make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not murmur. Number two, thanksgiving, I told us. That's the second decision that will make you consistent in life. Thanksgiving. Whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured, um, I can't remember what they poured now, caustic soda. And the lady became blind on her birthday. Her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense, poured caustic soda. And now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos we would visit her we were so tired yesterday but I made up my mind to visit with the family and when we got there she was blind when she felt my hands she was shouting ah, Apostle she was so happy they were the first people to give me a birthday gift lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone and the lady was so happy, joyful never for once did she tell me Apostle but will my eyes open? It seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? Very happy lady. She challenged me sincerely. I thought about that experience even while we came today. I said, my goodness. That means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy, your gratitude. You can choose to respond instead of reacting. Oh, this is unfavorable, but God is still faithful. And Lord, I thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for help. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping.
are you grateful koinonia those outside for some of you this is your miracle as you're thanking god you will find out that that sickness is no more there it responds to gratitude Lord I may not have money but thank you I have an account that is ready to receive your favor Hallelujah hallelujah decision number three that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love walk in love let me tell you something brothers and sisters once there is no love in your heart you just punctured the tank of your destiny get set for an empty tank the moment there is no love it's better that you do not have faith it's better that you do not have faith I guarantee you when all else fail in your life make sure your love does not fail love the antidote to offense you will find men and women who will be sarcastic they will say things ah are you aware that that woman is barren in case they've not told you know it now it's been 8 years all the children you see in a house are adopted when you hear such a news it can break your spirit what if your own friends let you down what if those you trust you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor let me tell you something the bible says blessed are you when you are not offended there are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. On the road, someone wants to jam you. And then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him, your father or your mother. Or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. Now, Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria, where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love never, not love can fail and then readjust itself love never fails, I give you the fail proof, the fail proof key to living walk in love genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart, towards people you don't like, towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me and you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life you will see how God will let me tell you I have used this in my life God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do my love did for me forever I am changed by your love 
in the presence of your majesty sing majesty majesty sing majesty majesty forever we are changed forever we are changed by your love we're in, in the, the presence, presence of your majesty i'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say lord take away bitterness from my heart that 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 spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when i'm afflicting pain at others Oh, apostle, you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman till Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love i hate this person are you aware that i hate pastor alpha are you aware that i hate mama i'm just keeping quiet the day his cup will be full see let me tell you those who talk like that never go far don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles only herbalists give miracles without love the the initiator of miracle is love he was moved with compassion he saw them as sheep without shepherd although they were insulting him he said father forgive them for they know not what they do love love the last decision that will help you become consistent. Are you ready? Is vision. Vision. The Bible says without vision the people perish. The word perish was not accurately translated. The word there is to cast off restraint. In other words to veer off from a path. Vision. And nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it. Nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision. I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I would build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level. That I would be a PhD holder. God told me, prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out, a prophetic word comes. And God says, what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands. And it supplies strength. And you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now, I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you, when you hear something that is of God, there are things God has spoken about in my life, I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back, I had to go back and check my notes and said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so, I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. 
I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he's worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December, I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. God works in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, I'm, listen, he's not an irresponsible person. I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaf and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaf. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaf and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. Because your standing is, let me watch in case it doesn't happen. Let me quickly dodge. And God says, I don't walk like that. You must be still. Then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith. Because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah, I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life. To continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you. Is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing exams and the person is laughing and say you are sweating, Abby. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here. 
by the spirit of the living God that the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you kabakasuta pratika pariata the Egyptians you see today you are not the first to see Egyptians this man standing before you lives with Egyptians it's not that I saw them there, there, there is a level you get to as a leader you don't conquer challenges you walk through them they, are, they become your companions <laughs> ah yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I fear no evil he says for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me then he says this thou prepare you are not in a hurry you are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies we are going to pray God is ministering to us please I want to challenge somebody go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue I don't know who asked you to stop that business I know what stopped you pain stopped you you opened the shop and everything dried go and open it again let them laugh at you go and open it when you succeed they will bite their words again are we together yeah don't mind nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny that's why only few people ever succeed are we together the Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here that you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things. But because of your pain and failure, you are saying, look, I'm, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. never allow pain stop you from being consistent never allow the mockery of people while they were mocking Noah he was busy building the ark while they were mocking him after 90 years he continued 100 years he continued after 120 years God said Noah get into the ark I'm about to send the rain as I said God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying God this is June this is June and God says don't insult me I am more than able to wipe your tears it's up to you to believe God oh this year you will get married God as I'm speaking to you right now there is no man in my life the last man who came came as as careless as he came that's how he went and God says it doesn't matter how long does it take to settle you let me tell you it doesn't take time to marry it just takes vision and finances once there is no money you shift dates when God brings his blessings he brings every resource to make it happen are we together yeah. God said you will be gainfully employed this year is June and the last place where you were holding on to Air Force just came out day before yesterday your name is not there are we together the person who would help you just called and said look young man um, I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron but I'm sad to announce to you even us we are standing to maintain our position and then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail that's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord. One more time. Lord, I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with thee. We are going to pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is 
standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigned. Say na 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 and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you I believe you, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Manda Prata Shabarada Baladaba Kosa Pradiga de Baladaba. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. The power of God is able to touch you and change your situation. You've had the testimonies of others. Pray, pray. Is part of the meeting. Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick walk here tonight. Change my story, oh God. 
change that genotype oh God open up that womb oh God unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. In this place, Lord, you are welcome. In this place, have your way. Heal and deliver. In this place, heal and deliver. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody. Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast what the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray, and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now right now right now the first overflow outside right now right now right now breakthrough there is an angel of the lord identifying men breakthrough bring them in breakthrough it's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough 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 i prophesied as i mentioned that word the grace the anointing is visiting you that stumbling block leaves you now breakthrough 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 angels of breakthrough i release them across this congregation right now in all the overflows the thousands following us online breakthrough the power of god is touching you right where you are right now Right where you are, breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brakesi kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay, without delay. If it's your case, 
God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay. Delay. Just for delay. Right now. Right now, like a string cut from you. Right now, like a string cut from you. Inside and outside. I command that spirit to leave. Delay, delay, delay. Any destiny here. Under the influence of delay, you can't stand it. You can't stand it. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost destroying delay. That embargo of delay. You are caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. The spirit of delay, I curse you over God's people. This is a miracle service. Delay that has kept you down, that has kept you down, that has kept your family down. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. The Lord wants to visit families. The second overflow outside. I see the Lord touching men. As I begin to pray right now. Every family. Under any embargo. At the count of three. Fire falls on you now. One. Two. Three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Inside. Outside. Embargoes. Over families. Embargoes over families. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire by the message of the God of heaven. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. It's coming on you like rain, like the dew of heaven. Take that fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who this mama is. But madam, an angel of the Lord is touching you right now. As I'm speaking to you, fire is coming upon you. An angel of the Lord right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh God, once again confirm this call and anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing several gates opening. Hear me. And the Lord said, this is the womb of many people. Please, I want to pray for you right now. The Lord is opening barren wombs. That's what God is showing me. Whether miscarriage or no children completely, I don't care what it is. Lift your hands for you and for your loved ones. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power to perform be released right now. Every barren womb for you and your loved ones. I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb. Right now, every barren womb.
Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Kapatalaka. Sheketeketereposia. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every closed door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Be open. There is an anointing to open it. Every gate, every door, kaparakata, kepere shopa. Fire is burning in this place. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every chain tying my life stopping me from making progress in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Open your mouth and pray. I break that chain. I break that chain. It's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, change. Shakata bakata leke teke te, reke teke teke te be de bosh. Embreke te koto soto koto sh. Makata ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits that's right that will stop them from advancing but right now at the count of three everywhere in all the overflows father i pray once again validate this anointing once again validate this apostolic and prophetic call at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and i command every spirit to leave one Two, three. Right now, right now. Every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit. Out of them now. Out of their destiny now. Strange spirits. Strange spirits. Like fire. It comes upon you. Ababakata lekete. Shakata rakata. The refiner's fire setting men free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I tell you, I feel this thing on me right now. Ah! I want to pray for you. 
Watch this. The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones and I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says, these are the altars that have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category, physical fire, physical fire will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now, I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now, fire, fire, fire on every devil. Fire on every spirit. Fire on every altar. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn every altar. Let it burn every altar. Release God's people. Release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. You are receiving direction right now. Wherever you are, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Confusion is ending. Direction on ministry. Direction on career. Direction on marriage. It comes to you right now. Right now. By the anointing. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something will happen to you. Go ahead. Blast in tongues for the next five minutes. Come on, pray. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Regina? Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight I command every power hallelujah hallelujah listen 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 to me you know bad days are times when unusual requests are granted it was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went are we together the best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. 
every spirit represented here i'm saying it again right now no matter where you are hiding i stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing if i be called and sent of god right now at the count of three on your mark get set go 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 out you go out you go pack your load pack your failure out of their destinies hallelujah regina you are regina ma please come come on i have to pray for you i'm looking at you ma and i'm seeing the spirit of death upon you don't don't i'm not i'm not a prophet of doom i look at you and i'm looking at a corpse like somebody that has died i'm seeing uh, what they call it um um cotton wool in the nose and the ears as i'm looking at you physically and the lord is saying it's time for your miracle i don't know what is wrong with you come walk to me man hold my hands right now i command that spirit your time is over right now out right now be gone now be gone right now out 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 by the power of the holy ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me oh chronic leg ulcer ah i see it here it's not healing what is it is rotting or something is rotting is refusing to dry up that devil madam you feel pain on your legs pain on your legs you believe god will heal you a spirit just left you that's what they call leg ulcer and the reason i don't know if they diagnosed you but i'm looking at you and i'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer i'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes huh that's the cause of this thing that's why it's not here i'm not a doctor i'm just telling you what the holy spirit is telling me this thing is diabetes and that's why this thing is not healing stand up walk carry her up oh god help your mother now why are you watching madam look at me in the name of jesus christ no no you don't have to lift it i bring life to these legs look at me look at me look at me don't look at the legs move it move it go ahead don't be afraid just look at me move it go ahead move it move it walk come come to me come come lift it up lift it up lift it up lift it up look at this go ahead lift it up look at this look at a miracle happening to her she's still under the power of the holy ghost a miracle is happening to her in the name of jesus lift it up that devil goes i command it to dry now not later right now it dries up dries up by the power of the holy ghost give jesus praise give jesus praise Lord Regina. hallelujah there is a lady from kogi state right now i don't know where she is but you will locate her by a shout i sincerely don't know what i'm saying it's under the anointing of the holy spirit there is bondage that has been for so long in your family and god is saying today you are you are set free from kogi state one lady fire will land on her wherever she is whether it, where is she from who knows her where is she from eh? is she from kogi state bring her out it's time for the salvation of your family i stretch my hands on you and i challenge every altar standing against your family they must let you go right now right now release her i stand by an anointing and i i challenge you you are living right now the lord of sabaoth brings judgment upon you in the name of jesus right now by the power of the holy ghost 
release her life right now in the name of Jesus Christ 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene Okene is a place in Kogi state there is a visitation coming to that territory right now people who belong from that territory an anointing is coming right now I'm not saying you should clap I'm saying you should receive right now I don't know where they are but all those from Okene I release an anointing right now by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside strange visitations God is bringing visitation to that territory right now if you are from that place that name is a code in the spirit it locates you wherever you are in the name of the Lord Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please, hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying, as this medal comes, He's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord said, You should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shata bata, teke te te te, e parakata, shapari kete. Rise, 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 rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit. Kabata tati kete, e reke te 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 te. Kabaratu zopoli. Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand, two of you. Hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the Spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying it's the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gift, 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 gift right now. Gift, help them please. Help them. Gift, there are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God, men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now, right now. Gift, gift, the prophetic. Gift, the prophetic. Gift the prophetic eyes to see, ears to hear, eyes to see, ears to hear. Kaba shakata, badi kata di kabaritos. Dera bada basi de balada balada da 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 da. Job said, "There is a path which no eye has seen." The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again. Because I see it. Hear me. There are many people. You don't hear me pray this prayer. But I hear word of knowledge. There are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit. Wherever you are. I stand upon this anointing. Receive it right now. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Ay, 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 ay. Revelatory gifts. Kapatata. Rakatata. Abarata. 
I stretch my hands step into that level the word of knowledge the gift of prophecy the discerning of spirits Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress and the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen, it's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle you can wear it like a garment father i pray there are people this is the miracle you need that mantle of favor across this building the overflow the next overflow online right now on everyone everyone under the sound of my voice may mantles of favor come upon you right now mantles of favor come upon you right now Lord on everyone let no one be left let no one be left wear it like a garment wear it like a garment wear it like a garment let it open strange doors for you hallelujah hallelujah our time is gone we have to be fast my goodness now listen before we pray for the sick there's no time to just pray and ask them to come and so we'll pray for the sick but before we do that if you have your prayer request lift it up this is very strange what the Lord shows me usually we bring it out and lay it here but the Lord is asking please if it's in a phone maybe your loved ones wrote it leave the phone up it's not we're not playing games please please don't come and waste your time there is a god that answers prayers my dear come you are regina i have to pray for you because the lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family are you hearing what i'm saying there is a lot of suffering and pain in your family and the lord is asking that i pray for you number one number two for you the lord is saying i should tell you it stops i don't know what is that but the lord is saying it stops from today it stops hold my hands father bring your word to pass in the life of this lady right now in the name of jesus over your family i command that that pain that captivity comes to an end and for you the prophecy is that it stops i don't know what it is but i stop it right now right now right now right now Right now, it stops. Kaba shiba ratusia. Ende la rusa pras kubarita shubriata baladaba. Those online, I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests. No problem. The media department is stretching it by faith. Those outside, don't worry, you will lift it before we submit it. If there's something you should write and you've not written, you will quickly write it before we pray. But the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute seriously and violently on your request 
are we together? In one minute, just speak over it. Shabaratuke. Are you not the God that answers prayers? Lord, when you speak, it may look foolish. When you speak, it may look foolish. But we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word. Pray. Answers are falling. Answers are falling from heaven. Just in one minute. Shabakata. Answers are falling. Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically, you will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request, the fire that brings performance. Shakatabakata. Zike kerebo soto barata. Parite shaliadaka, then the kaporo sopatiadaka. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God on prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers fall on them, turning the requests into testimonies, turning the requests kabashikata ente karata. There's authority in this place. Turning the requests into testimonies. Hallelujah. Now begin to forward them to the ushers. Please ushers quickly start collecting them. While they are doing that, please be careful with those in front. Some of them are under the anointing so don't match them. You are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. We believe. I like you to believe the Lord. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing, Jesus. We hear me please listen i don't care what the name of that sickness is you must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling you must be healed are you hearing don't say this one is not serious uh -uh. when you are coming here insist and say lord from my head to my toe i must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the holy ghost the anointing is already touching people. Some of you, we may not even need to come close to you. It's the power of God. While that is happening, I want everybody in the congregation, we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer. No carelessness and gisting around. Begin to speak to God concerning your prayer request. There are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing. In every city and in every territory, God must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people. The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV, diabetes, 
two more breast lump breast lump a lot of breast lump the Lord is going to heal you hallelujah and to me please come we're going to pray listen there is the anointing upon him come Jimmy there's fire upon my hands and I want you to touch that anointing go ahead that anointing that's what the Lord says I should tell you to touch my hands and touch that healing anointing that healing power miracle worker ah. you are the miracle worker come, come and do a miracle a miracle today come and do a miracle a miracle today father please heal everyone here everyone and for those you are standing for you have the photos of any everyone don't worry while we are coming just show the photos whether it's phone or whatever we will lay hands on it believe god please no commotion as we pray for you just gently walk to your seat because of time we don't take instant testimonies please forgive us but make sure you are praying don't just stand looking at others carelessly let your heart be open thank you jesus go ahead help us You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Those, those being prayed for, don't worry. Just focus. We're praying for you. But everyone, pray on the request. Out right now. Stretch your hands on the request and pray. I command the spirit of death to leave you right now. Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. Prophesy and say, Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Ow.
Because our God is greater, is stronger, is higher than any other. His awesome power, and power. Our time is gone. Thank you for your patience. It's called a miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. Those still on the healing lines, don't worry. Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside, in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands. And let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredika shabriata. Are you praying? Prophesy. Lord, we declare the miracle walking power of Jesus. 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 Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus we declare we declare we have brought them before the altar they will never return to your life you have handed it before the altar it will never return to your life you've handed it before the altar of God it will never return to your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. Immediately after that, we'll take the altar call. Our time is gone, but even if it's two minutes, we have to give people who are making commitments for the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody, and receive the final prophecy. These prophecies are powerful. That's why you hear people returning back with testimonies. The prophetic words change lives. In my opinion, you've heard me say it again and again. I believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service. Not everyone may come out here. Not everyone may fall under the anointing, but the prophecy can come upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians that you see over your life, over your destiny, I declare that by this miracle service, you see them no more forever. I declare that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has delayed you, the level you are supposed to have been, I don't know what that level is, but I don't know what stopped you from getting to that level right now. Between now and next miracle service, run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. Run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced. I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow. In the name of Jesus. I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase. That which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year, I command in the name of Jesus, you will experience it. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Revive now thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year. It says revive now thy work. I don't know what has gone cold in your life. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe your word life. But by the message of the God of heaven I pray. Let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before 
men conspire against you, may God open your eyes to see. Hallelujah. Where men have said you can never get to, the embargo they have put on your destiny, I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. That unction, that anointing, that gives men capacity to be extraordinary, I command it to fall upon you right now. I command it to fall upon you right now. For all final year students, there is a finisher's anointing. The grace that grants men access to finish. In the name of Jesus, as you push this one last time, may the heavens push with you. May the heavens push with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every disfavor, every bad luck, everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life, I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes money run away from your hand, whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you, I command that spirit to live your life forever. I release abundance of financial supplies to you. Abundance of financial supplies. The spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things. In the name of Jesus, as this month comes to an end, it drives that spirit out of your life. I will always pray this prayer for you. I call again the helpers of your destiny. I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer. But in the name of Jesus, may they appear in your life. Hallelujah. I want to pray a special prayer for you. One of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access. God has given me strange dimensions of access. Access to men of influence. Access to men of authority. I pray for you in this season. Whatever will connect you to men of influence, not just men who can help you, but men who have the ability to help you. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. Everything that has died in your hands, I don't care for how long, in the name of Jesus, I command resurrection upon it. I pray for you. The resources you have in your hand, grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. Grace comes upon it to multiply. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry. May that supernatural glory, that presence, may that aura go with you everywhere you go. Whoever has said no to you, I change their statements. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for your spiritual hunger. What good is it? If you get money, you get all of these things. And with it, you lose your passion. That whatever you lose in life, may your passion for God not be one of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you submitted here as a prayer request, we turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. We turn it to your testimony. In this period of my birthday, as the Lord blesses me, I pray that he will bless you too. Believe me, I'm praying for you from my heart that whatever God does for me, by his mercies, the mercies of the God of David, may he do it for you. As God lifts me, may he lift you. As God wipes my tears, may he wipe your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time 
We're looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus. May your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone called barren, go and return with your miracle children. Everyone called jobless, go and return with a miracle job. Everyone due for promotion. You had the testimony of prof. In the name of Jesus, may the God that lifts men promote you. Promote your loved ones. Promote you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. May you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes. While you are sleeping, may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Our time is gone, but receive this. I say it again, that while you are sleeping, may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you. Every gift you have, but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you. There are many of us who have potentials, but those who need it, that access to them is far. I connect you to those who need your gift. I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. While others are walking, may you fly by the wings of the Spirit. May you fly by the wings of the Spirit. Don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you. Don't let the devil make you think he's just talking. I'm not just talking. I say it again. While men are walking, may the Lord give you wings with which you will fly. Every family represented here, not just as individuals, as a family, return with your testimony. What you have been praying for to happen in your family, I declare that between now and the end of June, may you begin to record testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two minutes very quickly. You're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing. No movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord, but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for the first person. God bless you. Run out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, make your ways right. Make your ways right. It doesn't matter what you have done. God is giving you as many chances as will take to be restored to him. Make your way to the front. You need Jesus. The Lord is calling you. God bless you. Please, if you are coming, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up so that we save time. Clear the way for them, especially in the overflow outside hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands if you're coming out then join them say after me lord jesus i love you we're hurrying up but it doesn't mean we're joking say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i surrender my heart i surrender my life I surrender my all. Take me, use me, anoint me for your glory. From today, I am yours forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this prayer will be sealed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. You keep rising from glory to glory. Your love and passion for God will never diminish. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for answer of the altar call just make your way out there's someone waving his hands they are waving their hands to you and they'll have your details god bless you god bless you
God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.